Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. Obama had a red line in Syria, which turned out to be more magenta or light pink. Now Biden has a red line, but not for Hamas, not for the Palestinians, not even for Iran. No, Biden has a red line for Israel. Biden seems to be conditioning support for Israel and access to U.S. weapons on whether Israel continues moving into southern Gaza. So was October the 7th really that long ago? Has Hamas been eliminated? Or is Biden looking at the polls, which indicate young people don't like his policies in the Middle East? Joining us is Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu spokesperson, Tal Heinrich. Welcome back, Tal. It's so good to see you. The U.S. and Israel have a deep and lasting relationship. I, I wonder, has Biden communicated a red line to Netanyahu? And, and if so, why did he feel the need to make it public? Thank you for having me on, Trey. Good to see you, too. Uh, you see, we have a red line. Uh, our prime minister just stated it a few days ago. We have a red line that we're not going to leave four Hamas operational battalions in Rafah. We've gotten to this point in, in which we've taken out the majority of Hamas's military capabilities, three quarters of their battalions. We're not going to leave the rest of them untouched. That's a red line. And that's a decision that we took as a nation. It's not a prime minister. It's not a war cabinet. It's not the IDF that just took this decision. It's a, a, a nation that took a decision that we will no longer accept life next to a terror enclave and that October 7th cannot happen again. Now, what would happen if these battalions would be left untouched? Hamas will rearm, regroup, and attack us again. And you and I will have this conversation again down the road. We cannot allow this to happen. This is our red line. All right, let's take, let's take a listen to Biden's Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, and I'll ask you a question on the other side. If there are going to be military operations in Rafa, um, a clear and implementable plan to get the civilians out of, out of harm's way and to provide for them once out of harm's way. We have not seen that plan. I, I, I won't give you a chance to assure Secretary Blinken that you are just as concerned about civilian casualties as he is. I, I find the lecture to be somewhat interesting from Blinken uh, to Israelis. Uh, Israelis are surrounded by enemies. But what is Israel doing to limit civilian casualties? You see, uh, we have the plans. Uh, they were presented to the War Cabinet. The Prime Minister has approved the plans for Rafah, and they will achieve two goals, the elimination of the Hamas battalions there and um, the evacuation of civilians from the fighting zones. Uh, once we move forward with, with the plan, uh, with a strategic plan, uh, we will, of course, uh, take care of, of the civilian population there. Uh, there's no question about it. But, but before I let you go, Senator Chuck Schumer is apparently not content mismanaging his own country. He has some advice for Israel as well. I want us to listen together, and then I'll ask you a question before we go. At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. Of course, the United States cannot dictate the outcome of an, ele of an election, nor should we try. That is for the Israeli public to decide. I think it's pretty spectacular in a really bad way that the Senate Majority Leader is calling for the removal of the head of state of an ally, but I'll give you the last word. Trey, Israel is a sovereign nation, of course. We're a democracy. In a democracy, this concept where the citizens choose their own government, who leads them. And right now, in, in case someone hasn't noticed, we have a unity government in place, which is reflective, really, of the public sentiment that you really see across uh, Israel. Now, uh, the prime minister represents the overwhelming uh, majority of Israelis who uh, reject the notion of a Palestinian terror state. And the impediment to peace, and I mean real peace, not just empty slogans, is Palestinian terrorism and their refusal to acknowledge that the Jewish state, the state of Israel, is here to stay. After 9-11, you know, uh, President George W. Bush said, either you're with us or you are with a terrorist. And 20 years later, we simply asked the same question. Are you with us or with the terrorists? 
You're a lot more diplomatic than I am, Tall. I, I think Chuck Schumer um, is a joke, is a bad joke, and he has no business whatsoever lecturing any other sovereign nation on who their leader ought to be, especially an ally like Israel. But you're more diplomatic than I am. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. We will have this conversation again, I am sure. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.